Uh, yeah, it was an amazing experience over there in Paris. Obviously, disappointments come forth, but um, yeah, we had a we had a good campaign over there, and um, yeah, I caught a flight back uh, Thursday afternoon last week and landed in Canberra Friday afternoon and Saturday morning flew up here to Brizzy. So it's been um, yeah, pretty quick trip trip up here. And how's the like how's the body? How's the mind? How's the jet lag? Yeah, um, it was a little bit jet lag first few days, but a few coffees and good night sleeps, and um, yeah, the body's good now. Um, be in a bed that's uh, not cardboard. Yeah, it's kind of it's, the beds were quite hard over there in Paris, but yeah, it's good now. Beds are nice and soft here at, in this hotel. And um, coming in after such an experience into Joe Schmidt's um, squad, what's what's it like having to adjust now to the to the different style of game? Uh, there's a lot of adjusting, but I got, there's a good coaching team with Joe and uh, the assistants there, so they've been supporting me along with um, some experienced outside backs like Roddy and. And Kel, so yeah, they're helping me along the way. And have the boys been asking you lots of questions about Paris or what the experience over there was like? Yeah, they've been asking for a few stories, but I try to keep it quiet and don't give too much away. Um, what are you, uh, probably a pretty obvious answer, but what are you mostly hoping to get from this squad experience? I uh, just enjoy, enjoy, enjoy each training session, um, just getting amongst it with, with the boys, meeting a few new faces, and um, yeah, just enjoying it day to day. Uh, it'd be unreal, but yeah, I'm not looking too too far ahead. I'm just trying to uh, put my best foot forward uh, each tra training session. And just uh, looking on as well as coming back to the Reds as well as what was sort of behind the decision to give Queensland on the crack. Well, I just you know it's, I always had um, in the back of my mind that I'd eventually come back here if I had the chance to, and um, yeah, it happened quite quick and probably not as. Um, how I expected it, but yeah, just grateful to be back and be back in Brizzy. A few weeks ago, you were saying that part of going overseas was really wanting to push yourself out of your comfort zone, get new experiences and such. So now we're going back to somewhere where you've previously been. Was there something in the challenge of the squad that really appealed to you, or are you looking to now more be a settled footballer on and off the field? Yeah, I think settled footballer on and off the field um, definitely helps when you have a family. Um, but coming back to the Reds this time around, I think uh, the experiences that I gained overseas will be, um, you know, really valuable for myself, and um, hopefully I can use that to help, you know, some young guys there at Ballymore um, help grow their game and, and their knowledge around sort of that stuff. So, um, yeah, um, like I'm just happy to be back, and hopefully I can add to the to the group. You've chosen a hell of a back, a hell of a uh, second row to try and crack into. Like getting his first minutes, Brad Smith is in the squad here as well. Like, do you still see that you're able to continue developing in and amongst a pretty, I guess, competitive squad? Yeah, I don't see why anyone would think that they wouldn't develop. Um, you know, you're only as good as your competition, and um, it's healthy competition with those boys. You know, I know them quite well. Um, when they first came through the Reds, and I, I had already been there, so to go back there and continue uh, my journey there, but also, um, you know help pass on some things that I learned overseas and, and, and learn off them as well, um, as they've also gained experience. So um, we're all there to make each other better and competition can only be healthy. And with the, this program that Les is developing, they've had the Wales game, just went to Tonga, mm -hmm. got to Japan soon, Europe next year. Like, did that have any factor in your decision making that this big RN, pretty versatile program? I uh, wasn't definitely not looking that far ahead. I think just the conversations that I had with Les and, and the coaching staff and. Um, you know, getting a bit of insight into what they're bringing to Ballymore and, and the changes that they've made, and um, you know, it's exciting. You only got to speak to the boys that are in that locker room. It's um, hopefully you know a recipe for success, and I think we we'll only find that out next year and, and moving forward. So, um, like I said again, good to be back. Corey, I might just ask um, with Joe and you heading over to Paris. Can you explain why he's Uh, it was pretty keen for me to go over there. Obviously, the Olympics is a massive event, and um, as you saw, each each day got sold out. Not only the guys, but the girls too. Um, it was a bit of a shock running out um, on day one with the first game. Usually, you're playing in front of one or two thousand uh, fans, but quite surprising playing in front of a, in front of a packed stadium um, game one. So yeah, it's an unreal experience, and yeah, I'm glad glad I was a part of it. And um, what's Joe said. Yeah, he's just been saying, don't overthink anything. Just, um, just take it day by day. Um, use your strengths, and um, yeah, you just learn off the other boys. And is there anything you can take from your time over in Paris? Or um, I know it was disappointing not to to medal, but is there anything that you've learned over there that you feel like you can apply back here? 
Uh, I probably went went pretty quick over there. Um, it's probably just enjoy every moment as it comes. Yeah. Anything online, guys, for Lucan or Corey? Yeah, just a call from me. Um, Corey to start with. Uh, a lot of players in your position have gone between sevens and fifteens. Have talked about how they've had to maybe change their body sort of style or their sort of fitness levels. I know you had sort of a month or six weeks with them. Did you have to sort of change much to adapt to that sevens format again? Uh, not too much. You can't really change your body too much in uh, four or five weeks. But I was trying to um, eat a little bit less, lose a little bit of weight. But in the end, I didn't. Um, don't think I changed too much. Thanks, Philip. Okay, and, um, you've been sort of around Queensland for a while now. It's been a place, particularly some people say it's been a place where the Wallabies have done very well comparatively to other stadiums. Why do you think it is that sort of Suncorp has brought the best out of the Wallabies and it's considered this fortress? Oh, you got to. You know, you can't look further than, you know, I'm hearing rumours that it's almost a sellout at Suncorp, so the fans are a big one, a big part of that. And, um, you know, we're going to use every single one of them to, to get behind us and, and rally us um, against this, against this South Africans. So, number one, the, fan, uh, the fans are so supportive and huge. Um, but then two, like, we've had some some close, tough wins at Suncorp in, in recent times. So, um, you know, we, we use that and we draw upon that. And boys have had, um, you know, good success here, not only at... Um, at test level, but but um, at super level, so I think boys are familiar with the ground, and um, you know, good weather up here also plays a part. So um, I don't know. I guess we win games here. We we grow in confidence, and and you know, it becomes a fortress the more you win. So hopefully, we can keep that going. Just on the spring box, a lot of that sort of power comes through that pack. You know, they call it bomb squad off the bench. As the sort of as an experienced forward in this side, do you sort of take that sort of challenge head on? Is that something that you sort of so you look forward to and you really sort of start like obviously you get up for test matches but you know chances are taken well chances are just a bit more sort of added edge to this sort of clash yeah big time I think you've got to meet fire with fire and that's the challenge for our pack this week um, you know we're here at home at Suncorp in front of a, a sellout so um, there's no better arena for it and um, it's going to be an awesome challenge and I know the boys are off for it and um, you know we don't expect it to be easy we know what's in front of us and we know it's going to be hard so um, you know we've We've come to terms with that, and we know that um, world champs at Suncorp, it's everything that you want to experience. Corey, it's um, Blocker in Canberra. Just wondering, when you were chatting to Joe about Wallabies versus the Olympics, did you have any doubts about going over thinking, you know, you don't want to give up a, a Wallabies jersey either, or was it an easy call for you? Uh, I wasn't really thinking too far, too far ahead. Um, I just trusted in Joe's. He backed me, he, wanted, he was real keen for me to go over there um, and compete with the Olympics and try to add something to the team. And yeah, I was more than happy to do that. Um, yeah. And what, what makes you feel ready to make this step up into the test environment? You know, you've had a pretty quick transition over the past couple of years. What, what makes you feel ready? Um, there's the coaches around me and the, and the, the boys, they, um, they've been helping me throughout training the last few days. and. Um, yeah, I can, if I can learn off those guys and hopefully I'll be ready um, if I get called upon. And as um, sort of Nathan said, you, you're probably not one of the bigger wingers in world rugby, but we've seen South Africa have real success with, you know, smaller, quick guys. Did you take any confidence when you were growing up that of seeing those sort of whippy, um, you know, smaller sort of wingers coming through in the South African ranks? Um, yeah, there's a lot, of, a lot of different wingers out there, some big, some small, so... I think you just got to use your strengths, and obviously, I'm not a I'm not a big winger, so uh, I want to use my speed and uh, in attack, and then just make my t tackles and defence, and um, yeah, just got to back myself, I guess. Uh, Corey, was it always the plan for you to to come into the Wallabies um, after the Olympics, or did you get the call from Joe or someone else when you were a bit jet lagged back in Canberra? Uh, no, it was I was never quite too sure. It was just. Um, I was on the in the airport actually on the way back home when um, Joe gave me that call. So yeah, I was never quite too sure. That must be. What's that like when you you know you're making that long that long trip back home and you get that call about the Wallabies? It's plenty of time to to kind of think and think about that. Yeah, probably uh, probably made the flight flight home a bit more enjoyable and uh, I could look forward to something. Um, yeah, I was just quite, very excited to get back back amongst the training and um, to join the boys. You want to have six uncapped uh, boys in the squad. What have you made of the other, the other five and what they've been able to do in training over the last few days? 
uh, yeah, all the all the new faces, all the new boys. We're just trying to learn uh, all the systems and um, trying to get our hands on the ball as much as possible. And yeah, just gel uh, um, gel with the boys boys that are already here. Anything else online, Ryan. guys? Um, sorry, can you hear me, Marty? Yeah, got you there. Thank you, and apologies for joining late. So if uh, if these have been asked, just let me know. Uh, Luke, um, firstly, um, there's some new law variations coming in, or some some ones for this series that haven't been there before. They aimed at speeding up the game, especially in the forwards. How how as a player do you think that will affect you? Joe Schmidt was saying the other day that it might kind of equalise a bit, bring bring them back in, make it a bit closer. Like, how, how does it impact you as a as a forward, the speeding up of the game? Yeah, it sucks. I, don't, I want the game to slow down. I struggle to keep up as it is. <laughs> um, no, nah, it's good. You know, we, we want to we want the game to be entertaining and for that to happen, um, I guess you've got to try and speed up the game in ways that you can. So, um, look, it doesn't change too much for us. Um, you know, we've got our systems and and um, Joe, you know, has a certain way that he wants us to play. and. Um, Look, I think it just plays right into our hands. It's, it's, um, you know, attacking footy and, um, you know, speed of ball important for for all teams. So, um, yeah, whilst it's gonna hurt on the fitness side of things, I'm sure Tully will, will enjoy it. There's um, some massive personalities and big names in that South African pack that you're going up against. Um, you know, how how important is it to kind of make a statement against them, and how do you rate the you know, South African type five, I guess, as a, as a unit in world rugby. Oh, well, they're world class, um, back to back world champs. I don't, there's no other way to put it. Um, you know, they're probably the best in the world right now. So um, it's not so much about making a statement for us. Um, you know, our goal is just to win games, and um, this week is another opportunity to do so. And for that to happen, um, like you said, you know, we've got to, we've got to, you know, be, be right up for the fight in the top five, and that's where it starts and, and ends up in games. So, um, look, big challenge. We know what's what's coming, and uh, we don't shy away from it. Um, it's going to be tough, but that's that's test footy, and uh, we just roll our sleeves up and just go to work and um, and do um, the plan that we we'll set out to do, and hopefully that gets us a win. Thanks, um, Corey. I'm not sure if you were asked this, but what was the village experience like for you? Did you come across any big name, famous athletes, and did you get enough meat in there? <laughs> Uh, yeah, there's a there's a lot of um, big names in there. We got Rafa. I think he was just staying around the corner from from the Aussie camp. Um, Simone Biles. Um, yeah, there's plenty of big names um, that were in the village. Yeah, that's for sure. And can I ask what what, what was your last hundred meter time that you remember doing? Uh, probably haven't run hundred since school, so don't think it was that good at school. Maybe mid twelve. So yeah, he's well, lying. It wasn't that good. <laughs> mid twelve. So, so, so you're not backing yourself up against um, Noah Lyles then? No, definitely not. How would he go as a rugby player, do you think? How would he go? Yeah. yeah. Ah, he'd probably be pretty good on the wing, I reckon. <laughs>